three, two, one. And we are on live right now. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are with me, I'm scrolling through Facebook. Um, you are watching the podcast, the new season of podcast, State of Our World 2024. And we are going to talk about humanity for better or for worse. And I'm your host, Vicky Esther Chang, all the way from Singapore um, and across the Atlantic, I've got Mr. Ralph Ave all the way from California. Uh, Ralph, this is uh, 1.32 p.m. Singapore time on a Thursday. Sunny, uh, welcoming city-state um, in the tropical, uh, I should say, at the equator. Um, where are you? Tell us where are you from uh, and tell us the, 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 the environment where you're from. Let us imagine where you are. Uh, in the high desert of California, 10.30 p.m. Wednesday night, so still hot here. <laughs> Tell us what's happening over there, Ralph. Uh, not much. We live in a small town, so it's, you know, all that stuff you see on the news, we're not really affected by that. We're far away from all that craziness. Okay, and ladies and gentlemen, that craziness is talking about, we are in the heat of the American election. And even though it's not my country... But I would have to be honest, um, Ralph, um, whatever leadership and whatever direction America takes, it is going to shake the world. Um, it is going to shake the world because um, it is the world's greatest economy, the biggest economy. And we need a leadership that's going to steer um, the Amer Amer America and the rest of the world in a particular direction. And we are in a way affected. In fact, we are very affected. And, and there is a saying right here, um, if, if America sneezes, um, this part of the world gets a high fever. <laughs> you know, and I want the world to be a better place uh, in terms of economic strength, in terms of Main Street people like myself, um, that we can have a more peaceful life, we can have a more stable um, world, we can have a better economy, better jobs, better businesses, um, safer place for us to travel. But that is the craziness that is not within realm, uh, realm's world right now. <laughs> That's in the media. So am I right, Ralph, to say that we are in a way connected, uh, Ralph, believe it or not? Yeah, I think U.S. has a lot of influence on the world. Um, they will also call America the world's police, right? So wherever, yeah. which way America flows, that's the <laughs> way either the economy flows or the world flows. So yeah, whether yeah. or not, yeah, and and, and, yeah, those enemies. So and and I and I think let's not get into the the politics. Just I'm talking about we, um, the mainstream people want to have a, a life that we can move on. Um, you know, the, the war, just very quickly, I really wish that the war will end, um, whatever war there is in that part of the world, um, because not only it's affecting supply chain, it's affecting logistics, it's affecting prices in our pockets, um, food, um, shipment, and, and of course, humanitarian um, lives, and, and we want all our neighbors to be at peace with each other. So having said that, let us wish the world um, a better place and let us wish humanity um, gets better and we're going to talk about today or where we left off yesterday you know Ralph um, what we are talking about is just an everyday coffee table talk um, entertainment politically correct reasonable uh, person like you and I we don't speak anything to hurt or harm anyone in fact I think the world should go in the direction um, speak and act in a way that we do not harm or hurt our neighbors, which is one of the commandments in the Bible. 
Um, and, and I've got so much wish for you and your people and wish for me and my people that, and the young people and the world that you're going to leave behind. And we talked about quiet creating yesterday, one of your um, uh, pet subjects, which I want to also have my take on it. Uh, we talked about quiet creating. Um, where, do we le where, where have we left off, um, uh, uh, Ralph, yesterday about quiet creating? I think it's on the perspective of it, right? Uh Am I getting rewarded? What's why is it worth it for me to work harder that you're not gonna give me an award or a raise? There's no point. I work harder than yeah. this guy, I get the same the same raises, the same bonuses. What's the point? How do you keep a person motivated that's really high speed? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. so and and I wanna um take on your topic to kind of um redefine it um the way i see it also which also it's about quiet quitting um I, i'm looking at how it affects the mental health um quiet quitting why are people quiet quitting because it affects their lives and affects their health it affects their minds because they say like what steve jobs say why did why do they want to put up with all this right you know um, he was being asked about, you know, all these years trying to push Apple, even on the brink of bankruptcy. You know, it's not easy just to push an enterprise. Um, and it says if it's not for passion, why do people want to put up with all this shit, all this, all, you know? Um, but, and the thing is that sometimes we forget that we quit not only from jobs, but we are quite quitting from our lives. We are quite quitting from a social group, even though we don't kind of concretely define that boundary. We kind of just move away, right? Because it feels uncomfortable. Um, it, it, it's just a subliminal quiet quitting. You know, some things are very tangible, like what you say in a corporate sense, because you, you kind of say, um, you don't want, you, there are two ways. One is you you tender in your resignation in a very tangible form. Like you're going to say like goodbye to your boss, goodbye to the company. Or you can quite quit by saying, hey, this is not worth it. I'm not going to put in so much hours. I'm just going to stick with it for a while. Right? Spiritually, you're already quitting. But there are lots of people quitting from lives. People are jumping down the buildings. People are just... Um, trying to kill themselves. There are, I mean, look at the number of suicide cases, right? Um, people are quitting from their lives. Um, people quit from relationships. People walk out from relationships. People walk out from the social groups. People just kind of stopped the WhatsApp, the Telegram, and the social groups. I want to quit. Uh, in fact, that's not wrong, Ralph, because we want to keep ourselves sane at a particular point in time things are just coming so much and we can't handle and and i think um you're right about this quiet quitting um in the very tangible sense and, and i like to just broaden that definition a little bit to say that people are quitting from from different aspects of their lives and people are just trudging pushing through um because the lives are so different now from the days of the past. We are being thrown things that is just like in a tangential manner, right? Things are just thrown at you and you've got to handle that. So um, I just hope that um, our podcast um, will give support to people, um, whether we're going to continue the season in a different form or not. Um, people should come on to us, um, write to us. Uh, to Ralph and to myself, um, what are the topics you would like to talk about or like to hear about or like to hear we, the host and the co-host, talk about? So Ralph, oh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you're the retired retired Chief Master Sergeant from the United States of America Air Force. And you also have another title um, from another aspect of your professional life as a career mentor, career coach. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and how you are supporting people pivoting to another 
path of their lives. So I'll, I'll just talk about my struggles going through. When I got up active duty, it was it was really hard. Um, the structure wasn't there no more. The mm. respect wasn't there no more because, you know, you, in the military, you reach a certain rank. And, of course, you got to earn it. I, I believe you got to earn your respect. But at the same time, when you see those stripes, it's automatically there. Mm. You know, in front of life. Right. Front of the line privileges. You get, you get all kinds of privileges being that rank but then when you get out you, you don't carry that with you so you have to adjust and start over again and there there is times that i think people i know why people struggle now because they having a hard time adjusting to regular civilian life mm. you know we can't talk the way we talked in the military we can't act the way we act in the military um and it depends where you work at too. If you work around a bunch of veterans, then that's you know it's it goes back to it, right? And I think a lot of people don't understand the camaraderie that we have. No matter what branch you served in, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marines, Space Force, Army, when you work together as a veteran, I mean, you, you just have that understanding. Like I got your back. Um, you know, we call it I got your six. You know, you got my six. Yeah, I got your six. You know, six mean I got your back. But um, a lot of veterans don't have that support. So a lot of them struggle when they find jobs. They think just because they serve in the military, they can automatically get a job, you know. And then you brought up about the quite, quite quitting suicide. Um, in the U.S., veterans, it's called 22 a day. We lose 22 veterans a day. From suicide so it's it's very serious you know that that adjustment so every time i find out like somebody's getting out of the military i tell them find your purpose don't give up just find your purpose like my purpose was coaching youth basketball that gave me some kind of purpose for the kids you know like i gotta be there for the kids you know my family i, I gotta be there for my family i, I had a reason to keep going mm -hmm. and so some of these guys, they have a hard time adjusting to where they can't, they can't move forward no more. Even if they got help, you know. So yeah. that that's why, for me, the the veterans are near and dear to me because we all serve. I don't care what your views are, your perspective are. Don't respect me. Yeah. I'll, you know, I help take care of you, and then we'll we'll just ride this journey together. You know, I'll check up on you. You check up on me. But yeah, so there's the pivoting part coming from the military. It's it's difficult for some and easy for others. It, it just depends on the person, right? You don't know what that person's been through. You know, he he may have seen the worst, and then he's he's okay in the civilian world. And some guy who's never been to war but can't adjust to the civilian world, thinking about you know taking himself off the grid. But um, yeah. So my my question for for you is like I don't know how you deal with the how close you are to the Singaporean military, but are there cases like that there where, where um, people are quitting, yeah. going off the grid? Um, I I would say generally, um, not in a particular segment of uh the society. Um, but you do see people quitting their lives um, in general because sometimes it gets so hard. Uh, a couple of things. The world is changing so fast. Um, you lose the kind of, um, I should say, groundedness, establishment. I should say the word establish. Um, and if you do not have a faith or support group, or a very strong social group, you can be quickly thrown off um, the curve in an off-tangent way when many things happen, when your business goes bankrupt, when you lose your job, yeah. or for people who pivot, or for people who have failed relationships, or people who have that kind of expectations. And expectations for me is 
any kind of expectations is the fundamental. Um, and, and if you want to talk about what you just asked, it, it goes into the very fundamental of human survival. It's almost like the Maslow hierarchy of needs, right? You're talking about very fundamental physiological needs as in, yes, you want to have your food, your shelter. But if, you're, but if your world shifts below you, whatever that is, you're, you're thrown off. You're great. Whatever that ground is. Because everybody defines that ground that you are standing on differently. It could be a relationship. It could be money. It could be you and a particular relationship with an organization, with a particular mission, with a particular kind of value, whatever you hang on to, we don't know because it's how you define your world. But if that world that you stand on with your two feet shifts, you are just thrown off balance. And if you don't get a grip of something, you suddenly find that you're lost and you're helpless. And if there's no help for you that reach out to you, you're on your own and you find that you're on your own. And I'm talking a fundamental thing that happens throughout humanity. It doesn't just happen with Singapore or America. It happens with anyone. Um, you're talking about young people in, in, a, in, in Japan quite quitting their lives because they just become social uh, gamers in their house and they just don't leave their rooms for seven years. If you look at all these news that's coming out, you know, um, because there are lots of news that we don't watch or we don't read, but with the social media of reporting from um, citizen journalism, we hear a lot, um, you know, about what's happening from other parts of the world. Look at, look at Japan young people who can't find meaningful jobs, um, a fast aging society, um, a society or economy that's just trudging uh, through, and then young people who are just quitting their lives because they just hide out in their rooms, get their food from their parents for years, and then they just become gamers in their homes. And this, they are just the invisible population, and it's sad. And you've got people who are so talented, who've got so much energy, they can do so much change, but they quite quit from their lives. And we're not talking about suicide rates, we're talking about people that are just hiding in their rooms. And that happens in many societies, right? Um, and, and of course, it happens in many parts of the world right now. We're not even talking about refugee uh, situation. We're not talking about the wars, etc. We're just talking about very middle um, ground um, uh, 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 people in the world right now and they're just quitting their lives so so I am worried you know and, and my, my my other question to you and I uh, because we're going to wrap up um, your um, uh, episode as co-host because you know we take a lot of time from our lives just to do this for the world um, and I thank you for that um, civilization humanity have, have civilization, you see, to me is a big fat word, risen throughout the years. You know, technology has risen, right? But has civilization risen? Have our behavior and our conduct with our neighbors risen? Have we become much more sane, much more dignified as people, as a whole in the world? Um, and this is a very, this is a very personal answer, a very personal opinion. Right, based on your observation, based on your mind. And it could be very, very different. What do you think? What's, what's your short answer to this? We don't have down to 5,000 essay answer. <laughs> do you think yeah. civilization has risen? Has it risen? Civility, I should say. Civility, I think. I think we need to get back to where we respect each other's views, no matter what. There's, mm. there's too many times they're going to judge you because yeah. you hang out with this person, hang out with that person. or And I was told, told this, um, I always tell people, I don't care what, what you do. You know, if, if you treat me with respect, I'm going to treat you with respect. That's, that's how I am. I'm not going to judge you for the things. Code of the day. <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, but I think, I think with, with the technology part of it, there's a lot of bias in there, right? So 
they they kind of sway you into thinking one way and then when you look deeper in into it it's like that's not the whole picture you didn't show me the whole picture so the, mm -hmm. the technology and the stability part that it's not interacting like how it should from from my point of view because it should give you an informed thought it should give you uh, the things to sh give you the right decisions to make not a biased one where it's just one-sided and that i think that's a problem between civility and technology when it, it's clashing it's not clashing. working together so we should write a book on this civility <laughs> versus technology versus civilization and and why do i say this because the platinum platform um you know this platform that we have you know for these years um, I see myself or I see the platform as something that helps um, civilization, helps us, uh, 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 humanity in a very, very drop in a big bucket way. You know, um, sometimes we think that our efforts are small, but hey, um, you know, when you look at a bucket, it starts with a drop. Right. And at the end of the day, it does fill. Um, no one's effort is too little, Ralph. Um, that's why you've got people who come up with great ideas and they change the world. Um, when they are able to garner the resources. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Um, from my perspective is, very shortly, my answer to you is, um, I am sad. We are at this stage of, our, of the world. Because what has education taught us, literacy taught us? What has civilization taught us for the last hundred years? I mean, we have we have turned from, you know, I've been listening to a lot of sermons online, I'm listening to people online, um, and I kind of get snapshots like what you say. There's danger, of course. You know, the reels that comes in at 30 seconds. Right, the shots that comes in at 30 seconds, at 60 seconds, the, vir the virality of things that goes because it's just 30 seconds is one minute and it goes like millions of views and, and you kind of subscribe. You say, yes, why? Have, you know, you kind of think that the million views out there is right. But I, I'm just thinking, you know, from what I've seen throughout this, um, it's taking a step back. I may be right, I may be wrong. It's just my own perspective on a personal level. Um uh, you know, I, I feel sad that we're at this stage compared to the amount of resources, amount of men hours the whole world has lived throughout the hundred years. Um, you know, we have been like four billion to now six point something billion people. Look at the man hours we're living every day. Every day. Um, look at the poverty that is still in pockets part of the world. Look at pockets part of the world is still scrambling for food. Look at pot, pocket part of the world that still does not have water. Look at pockets part of the world that still struggling with irrigation, clean water, plastics, pollution. Look at certain pockets of the world that they do not have good infrastructure for young girls and young children for education. Basic humanity. What have we missed out? Um, I, I'm looking at a big picture. Why are roads still not mended? <laughs> Why are rubbish not incinerated? Why is it not cleared in the streets? Why are still homelessness that policies that have not been able to address? Have some people become lazy? Have the resources not been kind of uh, uh, kind of like being put in certain parts of the world. Why are certain issues not addressed sufficiently or talked about sufficiently? So I'm sad that in a big in a big macro sense that we have not addressed this while well, technology is going into one way AI. Um, of course, you know. That's where the money goes. Right. What's the incentive? I think we talked about incentive before. Um, the other one, I, I, I think, I think one of your candidates, Rami, something you know, who's just dropped out. You talked about incentivizing. It's such a huge word. 
um, how do we incentivize certain resources to be at certain parts of the world that are so much needed? And we're still at this point of the world, 2024, we're still looking at people who do not have clean water and the infrastructure for the, for, for the streets, street lights. So, so I'm looking at that. Now, let, let's talk about civility right now. Um, in, in, a, in a very micro, narrow sense, are we treating our neighbors right? Like what you say, if you respect me, I respect you. I, I think that should be a very fundamental uh, uh, principle for humanity. And, and, and I, what I, I respect about you, Ralph, you are, you are able to bring very complex things down to very simple words. <laughs> you know, I remember what you say, don't create enemies, don't make enemies, one word. I think I still remember that. And you know, yesterday we left off with, you know, just push through and, and just, uh, no matter what, just do your best and just go through. And, and like what you say today, you respect me, I respect you, whomever you are. Um, I think that respect, the neighborliness, respect, still do not exist at certain civilization or certain pockets of civilization or people who live together using very simple terms, communities and neighbors or the person beside us. Um, I think that is so huge, um, even between colleagues on a very narrow level, right? People, colleagues who have different diverging, divergent views, we still need to respect that. We still need to respect the janitor. To me, it's so, um, to me, that's the basic level of civilization. You respect the person at the lowest level who actually gets the smallest kind of recognition or that invisible person. I think if you respect that, that shows you are um, civilized. And I think we need to exercise that more. Um, Ralph, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm going to add that sometimes it can be culture too, right? Culture. Yeah, so we're, we're both of Asian descent, right? I have my American culture and then I have my Asian culture. And then sometimes those clash too, right? Because <laughs> the Asian side is always like academics, academics, academics. And the American side is like, no, be well-rounded. Awesome. Do activities you know, get, get more well-rounded on top of academics. Yeah. So there's times where sometimes the cultures clash. Like, mm. I'm wondering on your side, is it is it that way also, or is it strictly academic? Okay, I would say that um, you are right, and you hit the nail on the head, and thank you for the question. It is all about academic um, achievements. Um I, I think that's because it's a different kind of baseline the economy started. Um, if you're talking about in different parts of the world, in Asia and Africa, um, people are trying to alleviate themselves, or I should say elevate themselves from poverty. And one of the chief tools in um, getting away from poverty is still education, getting a good job. That's the only thing that people know. That's what your mom will tell you, like, get an education, get your mathematics, and make sure you get your full marks. That's where the tiger moms come about. <laughs> you know, it's you're right. It's the context, it's the background, and, and it's where we come from. But I think America or Europe has it better now because you have come through a generation of being an underdeveloped country to a developing country to a well-developed country, why but people are able to make choices of their lives because of a basic, the baseline has elevated, right? And, and, and that's what we are trying so hard in many parts of the world to elevate ourselves. Well, when you come from a very low baseline, so the only thing you know that you struggle in the water, the only float that you can get is getting a good job from your education, making sure that you are the mathematicians. But yesterday that like we talked about, the world has changed suddenly. 
kind of disrupted, that world that you are trying to uh, prepare yourself doesn't exist anymore. Because suddenly, when you prepare yourself to be that kind of uh, job, suddenly that job is being disrupted, right? So not only that you should have the kind of academic skills, and now maybe very little academic skills, have the kind of life skills, that kind of hustling skills, then a kind of general general skills um, that goes that lets you go to the kind of very chaotic, random world that we are thrown mm -hmm. into. So very, very soon you will see like um places like this, particularly in Singapore. We have a whole generation of people um being educated and being told to go through a very rigid, formalized, structured ladder that goes this way up. Um, and if you go this way, you are seen as like you're underachiever. And that's very, very, very real. And we got to take away that kind of social stigma. I think we hit the nail on the head. Because when you don't see, you're not seen as academically well achieved in a particular society, you are seen as an underachiever. Now you will still go back to your lane. And when your lane fails, you dare not say anything. You dare not gear here, right? Because there's so much social stigma put under um, uh, your shoulder that kind of, in a way, subliminal says that you are um, an underachiever academically. So if we take that away, I think it's a big debate um, in many societies now. If you take that away, you know, if you're not doing well academically, hey, you are free from that glass ceiling that we all try to put ourselves. And then you are free to achieve your kind of multi-talent. You can be an artist, you can be a singer, you can be um, an Instagrammer. Right, you can be a podcaster, you can be a media person, you can be a cyber security person, you can be a gamer and make a career out of it. Depends on how you view the world. Now that is even harder because in a structured approach, you are given that kind of um map, road map, right? But in a real world right now, in a chaotic world that you're muddling through you are not given a roadmap at all. That Google map is taken away from you. So I think we are in the crossroads where a society that is so structured will struggle through a transition time whereby another generation of young people try to be in a particular world whereby it's unstructured, chaotic, whereby they need to model through um, to, su to succeed in their own way. So that takes another kind of talent, and that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be a real struggle. And I think when you hit that, that with that question, I thank you because that's where the transition and the pivoting of a society, um, is, um, relevant. And I think that's what um, societies um, struggle. Ralph. Yeah, I think people need to open their minds more, not just here, but, um, all over. Because like you said, it's so structured. Um, yeah. What happens when they don't get in that lane? And you said it's a stigma, right? Yeah. <laughs> to, we need to teach them like, hey, there's a lot of successful people that went to trade school, yeah. got a job, and then got their bachelor's degree through their job because they paid for their education to get their bachelor's. There's other ways to get to be a nurse, a doctor, uh, engineer, yeah. you know, just get the basic associates, the two-year degree go find a job that'll help pay for that for your yeah. next two years of school but so my my question now to both of us is are we ready for the the final season of our lives a retirement phase and for retirement i i feel that you know you have worked hard for your life you know for 20 years you've been giving your life um so much um, and you you were right to say that, you know, in the military, um, it was really structured, right? And, and isn't that a microcosm of what I just said? You you are really in a very rigid, structured manner. There is a career path for you. 
you know, if you do this, 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 you're going to strike. If you achieve this, 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 you're going to recognition. And that's really, really structured. And it's how the world is here. Structured was, right? Or how the world was. Really structured approach. Um, and then we were talk talking about we're now thrown into the world whereby um, we've got so much disruption. That structure um, or that predictability is taken away. So that world, the ground shifts below us. Right When it shifts, you are shifted off your lane. And with the social stigma, you still want to gear back to your lane. Now that's like not helping you, right? So my, my question is that, are we now ready for yourself and for myself to come to a place whereby we say for the next 10 years of our lives to say, hey, I think we are ready for a dignified life, a quality dignified life that we can see the world go by um, in peace, in enjoyment, have the coffee in our hands um, and say, hey, it's a, it's a life well lived. Now, I'm going to pose that question to you, Rel. Um, in X number of years, uh, it could be one year, it could be 10 years, it could be an X number of years. Do you see yourself retiring with the resources that you've got already and with the world that you are um, to enter into a next season? And will the world allow that to happen? Well, yeah, I think I think I did set myself up in the next 10 years to where I can be comfortable. So there's a difference between having comfort and being peaceful, right? If, if you're peaceful, you're satisfied with what you got. It may not be much, but you're happy. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, like I said, it's a, it's a mindset. You mm -hmm. can have, you know, say like my kids are gone, they're, they're off to college, they, they have their own families, and me and my mm -hmm. wife just live one bedroom apartment and we're, you know, we're just enjoying our lives. We're traveling all over. That's, that's freedom, right? I'm not, I don't have a boss. She don't have a boss. We can just wake up on Monday and be like, you want to go somewhere? Yeah. Let's go to Europe. Let's go to Germany. Let's go to Japan. You know? So that's, I think with all the choices I've made when I was younger, I think I should be able to do those things in maybe hopefully 10 to 15 years but i was you know but i always count my blessings every day because you got you know, you got to live to that year <laughs> yeah so it's, it's just but it's, it's how you set yourself up right so i think i think i have made the right choices for myself and for my mm. family to be mm. so yeah and yeah yeah and i like to pose that question to myself too like to me, there's two parts of the question. The world, um, whether it allows us to be in that particular place um, and whether myself, whether I'm prepared to be, to be able to achieve to go that particular place. Um, I see myself as working really hard for my life. Um, sometimes you work hard. If you're a housewife, you work hard. Uh, you do not work hard at your job, but you work hard as at your job as a wife, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a student, you work hard at your job as a student, right? If you are a caretaker, you work hard at your job as a, as a caretaker. And I think we all try to try our best. We all try our best in our lives, whichever role that you're put in. Um, roles that you choose to and roles that you do not choose to is given to you or is thrown at you. No matter what, I think we all work, we all work hard, and we deserve a good retirement at the end of how many X years of your life that you've lived. Come on, Ralph, life is not easy at all. You know, we go through so much up and downs. Um, uh, I've gone through so much difficult times, uh, unseen. And people do see me good because I still smile, you know, and I still look good. Um, you know, I've gone through a lot um, with 
a particularly hardest part, of course, is the passing of my mother. Um, but I've been blessed in many parts of my 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 lives. The passing part of my mother, mentally, emotionally, and and family wise. Um, you know, we've talked about that in the humanity summit before, um, crossing the chasm. Um, I, I would think that. Am I ready? Okay, one statistic for you, Ralph, and for the viewers out there. Studies have shown for a Singaporean to retire, you've got one, you've got to have one million cash to retire at least comfortably in Singapore. Um that I mean, is statistic. So it that's just in Singapore, right? Singapore. What's the country next to you? Malaysia. Malaysia? Yeah. Can't you retire there with the one Andy <laughs> better off? I'm just great I'm just observation. Asking. Great observation. <laughs> I think a lot of people are doing there. Um, but I, I am trying to just say that what whomever, whatever you you are gonna go into next season, you need to have insufficient resources, right? Mm -hmm. Money is one thing. What about health? You want to come to a particular point of your life if you work so hard for. And you've lived this. You've lived different kinds of wars in your life. You not, may not be at the frontier of a military war. You've got so much wars with people, with your lives, with your bosses. You've struggled financially, career, um, psychological griefs, overcoming difficulties. You must take care of yourself and not take your life for granted because you don't know when, which day that ground will shift below you. That's what I'm trying to say. Resources, money, health. So that when you arrive there, Ralph, in 10, 15 years, you better be have good health to like travel around the world, right? Um, financial resources, health, energy, mental resources, unseen stuff, a companion in your life, um, a kind of social network, small, no matter how small, uh, a kind of, to me, a kind of passive business, a kind of passive activity that keeps you going, that tells you, yes, I'm still contributing to the world. I need that. For example, um, I need to be thinking that in my retirement life, I would be able to give back whatever I have traveled in my life. And that I'm valued as a person, not as a liability out of old age. I think we need that. And people have forgotten that when the older you get, the wiser you become. And that you do not become a liability of the community, that in terms of health, resources, but yet you become someone of wisdom that people can come to you for directions. So I feel that that meaningful part of retirement, to me, at, at the pinnacle of life, is most important. So I want to like retire at a particular stage whereby I'm seen as a person with the right, with the answers, or with opinion, that people do respect. Um, I, I think, think that kind there, of, Sorry? <laughs> I think you're already there. <laughs> I think we have to be there because we have lived a life that tell, like what we're doing now, right? To tell people that we have struggled and it's going to be better. Um, you don't have to, you know, we are trying that very hard. So, so I think meaningfulness of life is a kind of resource. People's respect, like what you say, that you don't become like a burden to the society, but yet you become like an asset to the world when you at a particular stage. Um, you become, um, yeah, you have the social uh, uh, peacefulness with your neighbors. Um, you have the kind of financial capacity, which is only one aspect. Everyone, there's only one aspect, you forgot about the rest. Um, you don't just retire to me, to me, I can't just retire and just have a sip of coffee and watch 
the waves at the beach. <laughs> you know, I would love that. And I think in some ways, I'm trying to achieve towards that. And I think I can um, achieve towards that. But that, Ralph, it doesn't answer to the worthy, worthiness of the lives that we have lived. You know what I'm trying to say? Because we have struggled and we have worked hard. Uh, and it must end at a particular stage of our lives to say that, hey, it is a life well lived. I think it's all worth it. What do you think, Ralph? I'm giving a different perspective. No, and that's fine, right? I, I think I think for me, I've already done those. I've you know, served my country. I felt, I felt my purpose, but after so many years, I think I'm ready to just sit down and in the front porch and just relax or on the beach, you know, just, and uh, hopefully, like, like I said, the choices I've made yeah. years before, hopefully will take care of me years later. Yeah. And, and when I get there, I am going to have my cafe with my hotel and then you and your wife is going to come and stay and Absolutely. each of my coffee is going to be it's, it's going to cost 20 euro, 20 euros or 20 dollars US dollars <laughs> per coffee but we're going to have a good chat and probably we're going to have a live podcast with the world when we arrive there well um such a good um talk with you well and such a note that we end um about life I think all of us deserve a dignified life um, for ourselves. Um, we all live through life and we've all got stories to tell. And my wish for you and your family and for your community and for the world and for my neighbors, um, for this part of the world, which is so precarious. And I can't, and I, and I must end with this note. We are at the nexus of a world implosion of a third world war if we're not careful. And I'm not kidding. And I'm not kidding. It could happen just mm -hmm. at our doorstep at um, uh, the South China Sea. You know, it could just happen there with a nexus of forces come to a particular point and the spark of fire can just spark up. I mean, if you look at, if you look at the all the Joe, geopolitical news, but as a human, as as someone who's just in a main street, I hope that doesn't happen. I just hope that we all live in prosperity, peace and harmony. So, um, Rel, would you like to have your say as the co-host for the next like three minutes? State yeah, of totally, our world. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, I really hope World War III don't happen. I mean, some say we're at the brink of it, but hopefully we have people, the right leaders in place where better heads will prevail and we can have real peace, you know, just everybody getting along, living our lives and that's it. I love that. So two quotes from you. Everybody, learn to get along. <laughs> and what, what was the word that you just said? Um, um, I love that. What was the quote that I said, quote of the day? I should, have written. I should have written down. <laughs> Everyone, like, just click replay for um, Ralph's very wise words. Um, I'm looking for, forward to the day whereby I have my own cafe. And then I'll invite all my podcast friends to come here and stay with me and pay that 20 US dollars per coffee espresso um, here at the particular place. I don't know where. Um, uh, for your retirement. And then, um, you know, we have a good um, international, um, global humanity podcast talking about the world and how we have contributed as one of the drop in the bucket. Will we do that, Ralph? <laughs> I think we're doing it. I think we are. We are on the way. Let's plan. I mean, it's just like a business. You've got to plan for expansion. You've got to plan for development. You've got to plan for our lives. So thank you, Arel. Let's just review. We've talked about quite a lot of things, but on the surface, um, we talked about quiet quitting. We talked about mental from there. We talked about leaving the world, um, a better place for our, our generation. 
and the first and the next generation. We've talked about um uh you know power struggles in a corporation. We talked about um leadership. We did talk about um you know the young people, how should they um get the careers in the future? Is it formal education or is it choices that they make? Um, do they hustle through um and the world direction? Um, we talked about that. We also talked about what are we ready for the next phase of our lives? Um, many of us who tune in are people who are retiring, planning for retirement, are planning for the future. Retirement doesn't just start like ding, 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 you're going to be retired today. You know, I think it's a phase that we need to plan. Um, it's a phase that we need to like look at. Um, to me, I'm always planning for retirement, been planning for the last 10 years. <laughs> you know, in Singapore, when you first start to work, the first thing in, in your mind is, how do I retire well? And how do I retire at the age of 40? Um, so I, I want everyone listening in, tuning in to write to us. Mr. Rel Abe, would you like to tell everyone where they can find you? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook. It's all my name, Ralph Ave. Uh, Instagram is the same. You can type it and it'll be it'll show out Avenue Junior. It's just to play off my name. And then I also uh do resumes. So if anybody want to reach out, straight resume, straight resume enhancement at gmail.com. And uh I have a website too, it's the same exact thing, straight resume enhancement.com. And Mr. Ralph Ave also has his book, The Modest Leader, that is nationally acclaimed. And also my um, co-author for oh, uh, Gold Nuggets Entrepreneur Series. Thank you, um, Mr. Ralph Ave, for his wonderful, valuable time that he's put aside to be my co-host from last week to this. Um, I hope that we can meet each other again um, for the better good of the world that we can talk about some of these issues, even though we just like skim through in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I think people do appreciate that um, there is a space for them. So listen up to, hey, someone in another part of the world, they are thinking about the same thing, you know? So um, thank you so much. And a shout out to uh, Madam Preet um, Srivastava from New York. Uh, she's going to be my co-host for another episode to wrap up the season. We're still gonna talk about humanity for better or, or for worse. I'm gonna to listen to her as an artist, um, what she sees about the world. Um, so uh, do tune in um, uh, with us. Uh, state of our world, humanity for better or for worse. Today, we did talk about civility too. Um, Ralph, over to you to wrap up 30 seconds. Yeah, no, That's thank my you, Vicky. Yeah, thank you, Vicky, for all these opportunities you've given me. Um, I'm really appreciative of you always thinking about me about your project. So, you know, thank you. Um, and I thank you, ladies and gentlemen who are tuning in. Um, do watch again, um, share, subscribe, follow, stick with us, or replay um, again and again. Um, and if it does help you, to um, give us a note, uh, a com comment that doesn't hurt or harm anyone, but it adds to a perspective to widen our eyes, to widen our horizon. Please do that from where you are. Um, like what Mr. Ralph Abe said, yes, if you respect me, I respect you. Or I respect you, I hope you respect me. That's the other quote from you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ralph. Um, signing off from Singapore. Thank you, Vicky. And Mr. Ralph Ave signing up, signing off from California. Thank you once again, everyone.